Okay, so in this video, we will use our knowledge of power series term by term integration to provide an estimate for the given definite integral. We will also provide an upper bound for the error of our approximation. Now it's worth noting that if you look at this integral, so integrating 1 over x to the 7 plus 1 with respect to x from 0 to a third, this looks like a classic problem of integration by partial fractions. Factor x to the 7 plus 1 as a product of irreducible linear and quadratic factors over the reals, and then decompose the result into a sum of partial fractions. But factoring over the reals, x to the 7 plus 1, is not an obvious task. So this, with our knowledge of factoring and especially limited knowledge of complex numbers, this is a rather difficult problem. So instead, we'll attack this from the point of view of power series. So let's try to find a power series representation first for the function we are trying to integrate. So we have 1 over, and here I will swap the two terms, 1 plus x to the 7. And what I want to use here is our knowledge of geometric series. I want to write this in the form of 1 over 1 minus r. And of course I can pull this off by doing quite simply 1 over 1 minus negative x to the 7. This now becomes my r. Thinking of a geometric series, 1 over 1 minus r will now be the series from 0 to infinity, summing r to the n. But r happens to be negative x to the 7. So negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the n, x to the 7 to the n is x to the 7n. This is of course only valid if the absolute value of r is strictly less than 1. But of course r is negative x to the 7. Well, two things. The negative 1 is killed by the absolute value. So we're left with x to the 7 in absolute value is less than 1. And we can take on both sides the seventh root. And then we're left with x in absolute value is less than 1. And so you see that the simple rational function, 1 over 1 plus x to the 7, is expressible as a power series in the form of summing from n going from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 7n, and this is valid, well, if an absolute value x is less than 1, x lies between negative 1 and 1. So we now have expressed the function we're trying to integrate as a power series on this interval. Can we use this, rep this representation of the function to try to integrate it? Well, the answer is yes, as our range of integration, 0 to a third, is part of our given interval. So we can now make a simple substitution, replacing the rational function by its power series representation. It's really worth noticing that if we went from 0 to 3, well, now the interval would be outside of our range of the representation, and so we could not replace the function by the given power series expression. But as the interval of integration from 0 to a third is part of our interval, then we can perform the substitution. So, this means that the integral from 0 to a third of 1 over x to the 7 plus 1 with respect to x is the integral from 0 to a third, and as I've said, we are now replacing the rational function by its power series representation. And now we can use 
term-by-term -term integration of the power series. The integral of a sum is simply the sum of the integrals. And now we have on our hands a rather trivial integral. So we integrate with respect to x. With respect to x negative 1 to the n is a constant, so it stays as is. And to integrate x to the 7n with respect to x, we simply have to use the power rule of integration. So we add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. This, of course, is the antiderivative of the function negative 1 to the n, x to the 7n with respect to x. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we obtain the definite integral by evaluating the antiderivative from 0 to 1 over 3. So let's do so. Well, this function, when x equals a third, will give us negative 1 to the n over 7n plus 1. A third to the 7n plus 1, but this will give you 1 over 3 to the n plus 1. Well, 3 to the 7n plus 1. Of course, this is only the value of the antiderivative at the upper bound, so it will be minus the value of the antiderivative at the lower bound. Well, luckily for us, the lower bound is 0, and if we evaluate a positive power of x at 0, the result is, of course, 0. So we don't have to write minus 0. So there we have it. We now have expressed the definite integral of 1 over x to the 7 plus 1 with respect to x from 0 to 1 over 3 as a power series but not, not, sorry, not a power series, but a simple series, but not any kind of series, but an alternating series at that. So let's expand out the first few terms of our series to get a feeling for what it looks like. So, the given definite integral is exactly equal to this alternating series and if we expand out the first few terms we obtain when n is 0, 1 over 3 when n is 1, minus 1 over 8 times 3 to the 8, plus when n is 2, 1 over 15 times 3 to the 15, minus when n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 22 times 3 to the 22, plus and so forth. And as always, if we want to approximate this given definite integral, well, as the given integral is equal to this alternating series, if we want to approximate the value of a converging series, we of course have to sum add the first few terms of this series. Here, we'll be lazy, we'll only be adding the first three terms of the series as an approximation. So if you do so, you will find an approximate value of the infinite series to be roughly 0 0.333, 314, And now, as always, we can ask, okay, two things. 
first, we can now say that this integral is approximately 0.333314286. So we now have our approximate value of the given definite integral. But whenever you have an approximate value, if possible, you want to ask, well, how good is this approximation? So let's look at the error between the exact value and the approximate value. So if we look at the error in absolute value, we will look at the difference in absolute value of the exact value of the definite integral. minus its approximation. So minus the sum of these three terms. I'll use a decimal expansion. And now you say, well, how are we going to estimate given upper bound for the error of our approximation, right? Every time you have the exact value, minus an approximate value. This of course returns the error, the difference between the exact and the approximate value. But what we have is a very special series. It is an alternating series and we can of, of course use the error bound of the alternating series test. If you remember, if we think now of this definite integral being the exact value of this alternating series, the error estimate in the alternating series test says that the error will never be bigger than the magnitude of the first omitted term. Well, we only added the first three terms of the series. So here is the first omitted term of our series. And quoting again the error estimate for an alternating series, the error of the given approximation is never bigger than the first omitted term. And this is a pretty small number, as 3 to the 22 times 22 is huge, so 1 over this will be really small. If you want to get a better feeling for this, with your calculator, evaluate this, and you will have approximately 1.45 times 10 to the negative 12. So the error is extremely small, even though we've only summed the first three terms of the alternating series. So we now have an incredible approximation to this rather challenging definite integral if we were to approach this thinking of the method of partial fractions. But using, if we summarize, two things. The fact that we know how to handle geometric series to express the function as a power series and now replacing in the integral the given rational function by its power series representation, we were able to integrate the power series term by term. The integral was now trivial as we only had to use the power rule of integration. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we obtain now that the given definite integral is equal to this alternating series. To have an approximation to any series, we only need to add the first few terms of the series. Here we've only added the first three terms of the series to have this as the approximate value to the given definite integral. And by the error estimate of the alternating series test, the error of the approximation is never bigger than the first term omitted. And so we see that only by adding the first three terms of the series, we get a very small error Therefore, this is a very good approximation to the exact value of this definite integral. And I want to emphasize one last point. We could have done this by hand, no problem. The numbers would be kind of large, a little bit of arithmetic and the long division. It would take us a bit of time, but that's the only drawback of doing this by hand. This is really easy arithmetic, except it takes quite some time. And that's it.